definitely another tutorial. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Yeah, as you can see from the title, I'm going to be showing y'all my first look featuring this palette. Okay, so while I do my brows real quick, I'm just going to talk to you guys about the ABH eyeshadow primer in comparison to the P. Louise primer. So the ABH primer comes in a silver packaging. It's very glamorous and professional all at the same time. The packaging has all of the details of the primer on the back of it, which it says that it is non-comedogenic, vegan, dermatologist tested, ophthalmologist tested, long wearing, um, clinically tested, water resistant, oil free, alcohol free, and gluten free. The P. Louise website does not have any claims about the primer being anything except having a nice coverage really, which just goes to show that if you have sensitive skin, allergies to makeup, etc., ABH would definitely be the better choice here. Whenever I'm trying to determine how pigmented something is, what I like to do is take a black liquid liner and just make a line across my arm or, or my hand. And then I'll swatch the product across the black line. So here you can see I have the ABH base. I'm going to put it right there. And I have the P. Louise base. Um, they're pretty much as pigmented as each other. They're about the same pigmentation as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, this base by ABH is much lighter, and when I continued swatching, they both faded out pretty nicely. They have two sizes. The full size is the same size as the normal P. Louise base, which is 15 milliliters, and that was going to cost $23. Then there's a 7 milliliter size, and that one is $13. Um, that, those are the ABH primers. Now here's why that price is basically justified. If you order the P. Louise base, you're going to pay 20 something dollars for that base because of the shipping. The shipping is $10 and I really don't recall if there's any taxes or anything on it. So essentially you're paying the same amount for a primer that is better for your skin, better for your eyes. Yeah, there's no mystery to the ABH primer is basically what I'm getting at. <laughs> and they practically do the same thing. The only difference is the ABH primer is water resistant, which I'm hoping to see if it creases or not because that was my biggest issue with the P. Louise base. It creases throughout the day. What I want to do is bring the concealer down a little bit and mix it with the eyeshadow primer. The reason why I like to put on my brow concealer before my eyeshadow base is because my eyeshadow base is lighter than my concealer is. So I want to blend them together. That way there's a nice smooth transition from my eyeshadow to the flesh tone color of my concealer. I am going to bring this down the upper bridge of my nose as well for the very same reason. One difference I do notice is the ABH base is a little bit more fluid than the P. Louise base. And it's definitely, definitely light. Which doesn't have to be a bad thing. I mean, if you apply it the way that I'm applying it, it won't look crazy <laughs> and wow okay so I think I used a little too much because this is pigmented so with it being more fluid I suppose less goes farther and you definitely want to blend this out with the quickness hopefully the other side doesn't set while I'm doing this because oh my god this is what you want the primer to look like if you're going to blend it into your concealer and it really did set, it's almost like, it's almost like it's matte. This kind of reminds me of liquid to powder almost, but not powder. Or maybe even like a liquid version of the MAC Paint Pot. The shade that I'm going to start off with is BBDC. Digging into it, it seems like the usual formula for ABH with the legendary kickback, which is not a problem. I'm basically gonna be doing a halo today, you guys. A halo. So I'm gonna pack this on. 
I almost feel like I should have used a denser brush to do this. So I'm going to take my Thrive Cosmetics eyeshadow brush and just pack it on. Oh yes, that's much better. Much, much better. So I'm assuming that these are meant to be pressed pigments perhaps. I am so sorry if y'all hear my neighbor's dog. They still leave that puppy outside all day. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap out the edges some more because I'm going to be adding the more blue-based purple on top of this. And tapping it out just makes it easier to blend the other eyeshadows in. Okay, so I want to add Believe It on top just to see what it does, if anything. And at this point, I'm just going to start blending it out a little bit. I'm not really seeing any issues with the eyeshadows themselves as far as blending goes. Especially since my base transitions into a concealer. These are going up nicely. Nice. Real nice. So the color that I wanted to add on top of this was Unicorn Tribe. And for that, I'm just going to take another blending brush. It's a little bit more pink than I thought it would be. I'm actually going to build this up quite a bit. And then blend it out. Because I, I like this color at the very top. And notice how I'm using the flat side of my brush instead of holding it like this. That allows me to have a bit more control in where the eyeshadow is actually going while I'm blending it out. So now I'm just going to come down here into the purple a little bit with this brush and just make sure it all comes together. It's time to come together. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of the ABH base. Okay, so just a little bit. <laughs> Even now I feel like that might be too much. Alright, so we're coming down here in the center and I'm tapping this on because I want the base to be even. I don't want it to be patchy, so when I apply the eyeshadow on top of it, everything is nice and seamless. Tapping also helps with blending the edges of the primer out. So that you're not unnecessarily picking up. I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way up. And I'm reaching into DDG. So that's what I'm going to do. I feel like this brush is not giving me enough life right now, so I'm going to switch brushes. <laughs> this purple is actually pretty subtle to me. Does it look subtle to y'all? Because it looks subtle to me. In my mirror, it looks subtle. Like, it's just enough. Not too much. I do like the shade and how bright it is in comparison to the other purples that I used from this palette. And when I'm blending, I always take my brush and blend inwards like this, so I'm tugging pulling the eyeshadow, putting it outwards, but I'm also pulling it inward. And what that does is it creates that nice little faded blended effect that everybody likes. So I'm going to take Believe again. And I'm just going to put it on the outside here. Because I want to see what it'll do. I feel like this color slightly oxidizes, if not totally. Yeah, it's changing, which I feel like occurs with most purples anyway, so it's not like a shocker. And I'm going to take BBCD, or BBDC is what it's called, and layer it right on top of that just for coordination purposes. It's not nearly as glamorous as I envisioned it on my sketch. <laughs> Maybe I'll take a little bit more of the base just to see what will happen. And I took literally the tiniest amount. I'm going to put it right on top of this purple, right in the center. Let's take a little bit of headliner. That's the white. Because when I do a halo, I like for my halo to glow glow. And if we can't glow glow, then it's a no-go. Okay. I'm just tapping and tapping and tapping. 
Yeah, okay, let me do the other eye and I'll be right back. <laughs> For my lower lash line, I'm actually going to use this, the shade Dream It. It's that blue right there. To get started, I'm going to take the L'Oreal Cobalt Blue Silk. I can't tell what that says. Silk Simé. So I'm just going to put it all over the place. So before I apply the blue eyeshadow, I'm just going to take this little itty bitty eyeshadow brush from Thrive Cosmetics and smudge that blue out, honey. Just enough, not too much. This is one more reason why I love dual fiber eyeshadow brushes. I just feel like because they pick up cream and powder so well, so easily, so effortlessly, <laughs> that they're a lot gentler on my eyes than natural hair brushes. I'm gonna take this Too Faced Bulletproof Eyeliner Pencil. This is in the shade White Lie. Honestly, I think they should make this again because this stuff is amazing. And I'm just going to go on my waterline. Having a base for colors like this is so important to me because when they wear it throughout the day, there's something underneath it to sort of act as Back up. Ugh, that's so pretty. Now I'm going to add it to my waterline. And I'm being really careful not to drag the eyeshadow and try not to pick up too much because it'll dust off into your eye. <laughs> and that sucks. Yes, you see how shiny my eyes look? So glossy, so party. It also emphasizes the actual color of my eye because more light is being reflected into it. So yeah, now what I'm gonna do is the inner corner real quick. I wanna use the white, to be honest with y'all. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little bit of the ABH eyeshadow base. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit, okay? Cause this stuff is this stuff is next level. I'm just tapping it to blend it out a little bit. And I have to do this quickly because like I told you guys before, this stuff sets fast in a mug. And so this is the way that I do my inner corners. Add a little bit of primer or if it's a shimmer, I'll add the shimmer first, the shimmer eyeshadow. Go into the eyeshadow, which in this case it's white. And I'll just keep layering until it's as bright as I want it to be. Whereas this one, it probably won't need me to layer it because this white is pretty, pretty pigmented. And I will say, you want to be really careful with the tube, the ABH tube. Squeezy tubes usually are more prone to accidentally having additional product come out. So once you get what you need out of it, Close the lid and try not to squeeze the tube before the lid is on because the product will definitely come out. Um, that happened to me. It was a total accident. And I find that because, you know, the product is under so much pressure, obviously it's going to do that given that you leave the lid off. So, ooh, and I'm going to do something super extra. Okay, so this is their pigment in the shade Icy. I'm gonna take a little bit of this, a little bit more of the primer, cause I actually need something for this pigment to stick to. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this pigment. Oh snap, oh snap. Ooh, hold up, wait a minute. Wow, if anybody ever tells you you cannot layer matte eyeshadows and shimmer eyeshadows or loose pigments, they are a dirty liar. They're a dirty liar. Don't listen to them. Anything's possible. I feel like my camera's not picking it up, but that inner corner is next level. I'm gonna get some lashes. Let me grab my lashes. So I got these lashes sent to me. These are the YL lashes. They're so cute. On Instagram and Facebook, I actually won these. And these are called Erika. Yo, I am so, ugh, so ashy all the time, y'all. 
Anyway, that's what they look like. I really need to figure out my camera's like autofocus settings because it doesn't autofocus. It's like locked or something. But that's what they look like. They're super duper cute. Using my Thrive Cosmetics Infinity Waterproof Eyelash Adhesive. It's a long name. And I'll be right back. Okay, so got my lashes on. What do y'all think about these lashes? I like them. I've never worn YL. I think that's what it's called, YL. Yeah, I've never worn YL lashes, but they're really, really cute. So now I'm going to do my lip. And you already know I have to do a pink lip to match the eyeshadow palette. I just have to. Plus, I've been practicing doing my lip. Not lip swatch videos, but just like... I guess, yeah, lip swatch videos. This is the final look. Here are my thoughts on, first of all, the base. So, P. Louise versus ABH. If you live in the States, you're basically going to be paying the same exact amount. So the price difference is not a problem. They also have a smaller size that is actually $13 if you just want to try it out, which I think is really affordable. I would say that this one is a little bit more fluid than this one is. This one is definitely more creamy. If I had to boil down to it and pick one to buy, I would buy this one. Number one, because it costs the same. Number two, because the formulation is exquisite as far as not having all of those unnecessary ingredients in it and being water resistant. So from what I can tell, there's no creasing going on in my eye. What else? Mm. And because I really just don't support the other brand. So I would get this one and I would suggest you do it too. This palette, I would say, is really nice. I mean, if you're someone who is a fan of ABH and you prefer to buy their eyeshadow palettes over anyone else, this is going to be a great colorful eyeshadow palette for you because it's basically the first one they've ever made. I like the vi the bright shades. I was surprised to find that BBDC and Unicorn Tribe are actually a lot prettier on my eye than they look in the pan. I am looking forward to trying these nude shades right here so you get a little bit of everything if you're one of those girls who likes to do natural looks but you want to try color here and there this is a great palette to grab especially if you don't want to get a big palette full of eyeshadows i think this would be good to travel with mostly because the packaging is very sleek so it's not going to get dirty it's sturdy it comes with a dual ended brush which those brushes are pretty nice yeah you can make all kind of looks with this basically so would I recommend it? Who would I recommend it for? I would recommend it for the girls who like to do natural looks and want to try color. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for requesting the videos you do request. Don't forget to subscribe! 65% of y'all are not subscribed to me and I love you and I want you to subscribe so you don't miss out. Yeah, yeah.